Hello and welcome back to the Angerati studio. We're uh, now joined by James from uh, Quigley, uh, uh, another startup here at European Utility Week. It's kind of been the flavor of the show. There are a lot of startups, new entrants to the market. And uh, also, like, you know, when, when you're a startup and a new, a new entrant to the market, you, you don't just get out of bed and do it. You do it because there, there is a niche that you've seen that isn't being served or, or you can bring a new way of serving that need. Can, can you just tell us a little bit about what Quickly are doing? Okay. Okay. To reinforce this point, the great thing about startups is that they all end up to be overnight successes after eight years' work. Yes, you have yeah. to or have, ten years, yeah, or whatever yeah. it might be. <laughs> yeah. um, so we started years back uh, doing heavy consultancy in big engineering plants, um, doing some work with EDF. We had to prove that what we were doing was making money to the UK government. So we were taking energy data and comparing it with what we were doing to the control systems in buildings, and naturally we saw a mapping between the two. So we figured out if there was such a thing as a smart meter, which didn't hardly exist at the time, and omnipresent weather data, which now does, we could diagnose flaws in building behavior, if you like, control systems, when they're starting so, stopping yeah, without so, going to the building. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so these are big buildings, uh, uh, you know, things like the Shard, big commercial complexes and stuff like that, who, uh, who have got such interconnected that the, 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 the gear has behavior almost, if, if that makes, if I can say that. Sorry, but not so much. Yeah, um, right. Really, um, if you think uh, of a market um, as a triangle, at the yeah. top you have big, big buildings, the ones you've described. Yeah. At the bottom you have domestic housing. Yeah. Um, the behavior of a house, yes. i.e. how quickly it gets cold or how quickly it warms up, yeah. because of the size of the plant or the thermostat setting or the, the occupant, whether they leave the windows open, they all have behaviors. Mm. But our market is much more where it starts to get complex in the SME market, SMB market, but they can't afford to put consultants and engineers on site. So if you're a chain of hamburger restaurants or you're selling a whole load of coffee or something like that with thousands of sites, a, a bank branch, bank, bank infrastructure, no one can look at a data screen or a, a dashboard for every building every day. And, and so you need to situation. find the problems yeah, and, yeah, and put the problems yeah. in front of the user. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and so, uh, so how are you doing that? I mean, uh, uh, and, and, and what's the channel to market? You know, because uh, again, that must be another challenge because you can't be ringing up every school and saying, hey, we could do some energy management for you. you, you there needs to be efficiency within that side of things as well. Naturally, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, Obviously, in terms of the whole market, there are, there are some friction points. For example, in Germany, famously, data protection is a major issue. Um, so getting into that market has to be done by people who can scale that operation for us. Um, in other environments, uh, the technical setup is slightly different, but uh, typically we see three routes. One is via the utilities. Um, so we've done some work with some of the big six in the UK, um, and we're talking to some of the guys over here. Um, there's the meter operators, so Schneider and Itron and so on and so forth. People like ABB doing the heavier engineering. Um, they can introduce them via their platforms into their markets. Um, so it's another way of going through the utility. And then in the bigger client case, so enterprise, uh, supermarkets and so on, in some cases they come direct to us. Yeah, because they're heavy energy users yeah, and they've probably absolutely. got someone who's in charge of just saying, look, can you just stay on top of that? And uh, the, uh, the other thing you mentioned uh, uh, off air a little bit, and, uh, and it's, a, again, a topic that's always resonating, it's, it's, it's demand response, you know, getting, uh, 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 reacting to load and, uh, and things like that. And you were saying that, uh, you know, you're also able to identify buildings that can play there, because some can't, can they? Yeah, that's yeah. great. I, th there's, a, there's a traditional or historical div um, divide in the industry. Um, so if you take the building control systems, or even so-called building energy management systems, they typically don't know what the energy meter is doing. But the other side of the call, uh, coin from the outside, the utilities have been historically selling stuff through a hole in the wall. They push electricity or gas in, and money comes out the other end and they don't care what goes on in the building. Demand response has to bridge that gap. So it's integrating the energy data to the system data. But to do that, which is a relatively expensive operation, short of saying to everyone out there, please switch it off, if you want to automate that process or identify where you could automate that process, you have to be able to segment the market. If you can imagine that a castle and a tent as two different buildings, the castle responds very slow to weather because it takes a while to heat up, Whereas if it's a hot day, the tent's hot within minutes. If you're ventilating, you have a different response time at night and at day. So 
what we're saying is that by looking at the energy data, you can see what the spare capacity is for chilling because we can see where chilling has responded to weather historically, so we know the size and capacity of the chillers. So we can see whether the chillers need to be running right now or not, or whether you could run them a bit harder to get some a resource of cold water, and which then, you can then and then during the, during the peak period yeah. allow that to recover and then recover at the end of the peak period. But so, but well, won't sorry, that the, need a full interconnectivity all the all the way to the end? It, it will, but but the, the huge hole in the market at the moment is identifying the client sites. Right. So if you're a utility company and you can say, let's look at my portfolio for all of my smart meters for electricity, say. You can literally say, where are the pain points within the grid, where, where the, the grid operators are saying, we want to encourage um, investment in this area. And you can literally go client by client and say, they must have a chiller, the chiller must be this size, and they must be able to switch it off. It's worth contacting them and often you know, on a demand input side, say, actually, these guys can save very serious ratios of their energy bill just for a few minutes or an hour switching stuff off they really don't need. And, uh, but uh, this must also be uh, something that, uh, you know, all the talk here about, uh, uh, you know, utilities wanting, uh, offering different services to customers and stuff like that, must all play into that because it'd be quite nice to get a call from your retail utility uh, saying that, listen, we've, we've analyzed your consumption and there are a number of things you could do with us. You can either help us with our demand response and there's a value for you in that, or you can, uh, you were saying off air, you you can swap that boiler out for God's sake because it's not doing you any Absolutely. justice. You know, you, you, you know, that would be immense. Sim simplest example I can give um, pub chain. We love pub chains in England. Right. Imagine a large pub chain. Um, the, op the manager in the pub responds to his clients it's October, it gets cold, someone complains, he turns up the thermostat, he turn changes the time clock, everyone's closed the doors because it's freezing, and everyone's happy. And they carry on drinking all the way through till spring. And suddenly, he gets an SMS message from his utility that says, back in October, at this temperature, you were using X kilowatts. Now you're using 2X kilowatts. Why is that? And he looks around and he sees that the customers who've got uncomfortably warm have left the doors open or propped the door open or the window. So, so this, this thing this is, is still heating. But outside. outside. So, ah, right. oh, I, I overrode my, my control system. Mm. I forgot to switch it off. That one SMS, we, we've seen on average energy bill for a, a large pub chain being 15% of their annual demand purely on inconsistent behavior for the cost of one SMS. At the right time, you can address that. And that's a significant operating cost differential. Pubs are going out of business all yeah. over in the UK. But it, the same applies, obviously, to coffee shops. We've seen... We've seen hotels, sorry, not hotels, hospitals, entire hospitals where they've had a power cut, there's a, ma a powered time clock, the time clock's moved out eight hours, and so when they're trying to have, patients like to be cooler overnight, especially when they're lying down, they're heating overnight, there's no heat during the day, they're turning the thermostats up during the day, getting no response, and then people are getting furious with the heat levels overnight. It, this, is, a, this is a building's yeah, behavior, if yeah, you like. Yeah. Yeah. That's a classic example, and, and, and unfortunately, all we've got time for. James, thank you very much for coming real in pleasure. and sharing. Thanks very much. And uh, I'm glad you enjoyed the show. I'm glad you made great connections here, and uh, you know, good luck with uh, for quickly and uh, going forward. And I hope to see you here next year, if yeah. not sooner. Well, if I can say one little closing yeah. comment, um, it has been a great show for us. Yeah. The Engarati network, we've had contacts through that that we just did not expect. And to have companies like Engineering IT and ABB, Schneider, people like that, taking us seriously with C-level execs, really having a serious discussion about the opportunities in the industry. The industry is changing, it's changing fast, and it's great that you're covering it, so thanks. Perfect, thank you very Cheers, much. Thank you for Bye. that.